Dime Magazine, here we are once again. It's your boy Lenny. I, I'm just so happy and so like, I'm, I'm just, come on, look who it is. Look who it is. I mean, it don't get no better than that. It don't. This is the number one, the man who's responsible for bringing the NBA and the ABA together. The man that's responsible, the, a, the Hall of Famer, of, come on. The Honorable Julius Servant. Thank you so much. Right, thank right. you. Thank you so much. I, I definitely want to, um, I know you're pressed for time, but I yeah. definitely wanted to, you know, just ask you, you know, you helping to bring both organizations together. How was that for you? Uh, well, you know, my role was as a, as a player, as part of the talent. So on the management side and the business side and, you know, lawyers, accountants, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I really wasn't involved in that. Uh, I think I was one of the uh, pivotal figures in, in bringing the leagues together. You know, they wanted David Thompson. They wanted Artis Gilmore. They wanted George McGinnis, Dan Issel, you know, a lot of uh, George Gervin, a lot of special guys over on the ABA side. And the NBA had, you know, their traditional uh, guys who were all pro and, and all league and the champions over there. So uh, so it was an interesting time, uh, 75, 76. There was a lot of talk about it. Uh, when I first came out of college in the end of 71, you know, the talk. UMass. Yeah, I went to UMass. And the, the agent who got involved with me when I left college said the, the merge would happen in two years. Yeah. It didn't. It took five years. Mm -hmm. So uh, five is a lot longer than two. And, right, and, and right. when you're in your 20s, mm -hmm. five years is a long time. Right. right. But, it, but it did come about. And, uh, yeah, I was uh, front and center to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, worked out okay. We, 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 you know, we chased that championship for seven years yeah. and had four yeah. trips to the finals yeah. in the first seven years over yeah. in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is no small feat, and yeah. uh, and even though we were second place three times and winner once, uh, we got the jewel and, and got the chip, and, uh, and and that was very gratifying. Definitely. Now you being back in Boston, like being amongst these walls, like does it bring back memories? Of course, just just flying into Boston, landing yeah. uh, in Boston, interacting with the people at the hotel, mm -hmm. the hotel people who work there, yeah. uh, as well as the uh, guests who were there, mm -hmm. and you know some of the people who would stop you and you give them ten or fifteen seconds and mm -hmm. they'd tell you a little story yeah. about what they know and what they remember yeah. from those six or trips to Boston Garden mm -hmm. and. Uh, I'm sure the Boston players would have plenty of stories to tell you too. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> this man, oh my God. The man that Michael Jordan looks up to. Come on, this is legendary. You know, uh, my next question is uh, going into the big three. You know, um, we all understand, you know, what's going on with Ice Cube and, you know, the NBA and, you know, that whole situation that's out. You know, what helps you to stay focused and loyal to such a man with a brand like this? Mm hmm. Well, for me, uh, Cube asked personally would I get involved. Clyde Drexler asked personally would I get involved when he was coaching, uh, actually. So it was on the, uh, you know, uh, respect for those two guys uh, that I got involved. And uh, now I'm still involved. And I, and I think that, um, you know, my involvement, it, it does have a timeline on it. Uh, but... Who knows what the timeline is? Mm -hmm. Let's yes. just let's just have fun with it. Uh, let's keep uh, building it, making things happen, um, creating opportunities for the young players who right. uh, have played in the NBA and the right. ones who haven't played in the NBA who get a chance to distinguish themselves over here. Definitely, definitely. So now, like uh, my last question to you, I want to take this to 50 years of hip hop. Okay. You know, uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, anything that could be around for 50 years uh, should be respected. You know, I'm not really a hip hop guy. I'm a, a rhythm and blues soul guy, and uh, so that's that's what I listen to. But I, I respect the artists. You know, with Snoop Dogg being out there and Ice Cube, and you know, so many others who have uh, really just changed the landscape uh, by their style of, of music. And uh, the following, the following is phenomenal. I mean, you can't go anywhere without, you know, hearing some music that could be termed hip hop, hip -hop right, music. Right. And the 50th anniversary, uh, hats off. You know, the big celebration at Yankee Stadium is going to be huge. Yes, and and uh, yes. that's right around the corner. Yes. 
Um, I don't know. I might even go. My wife might talk me into going. You know, who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. If I get a personal invite from Cube, maybe yeah, I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so my last question to you is, you know, where do you see yourself, uh, you know, in the midst of passing, passing the platon to those coming after you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's already been done, you know, with, with Vince Carter and, and Clyde Drexler, Kobe Bryant and... Uh, you know, a lot of the high flyers who, um, you know, who you look at, who, you know, who probably saw me play, Michael Jordan, yeah. amongst others, who saw me play and said, I could do that. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, you know, a couple of years later when they started really getting it and yeah. perfecting it, yeah. they were like, maybe I can do more yeah. Than, yeah. than that. So, you know, it's all about the yeah. next generation being yeah. better than us, whether they're our family, yeah. our friends, yeah. or, or people who we just admire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm inspired by, you know, what I've seen yeah. in basketball after my days because I've been out for a long time and what I continue to see. I mean, you know, the three-point shooting now is yeah. ridiculous and Steph Curry leads the charge oh in that department. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so the game has the game has evolved and it will continue to evolve, yes. Yes. and that's kind of uh, you fun. Evolve the game too. That's a great challenge for the sport. You know, yeah, I took it. Took it. When you jump from the foul line more than five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not about the jump, it's about the landing. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. If you land good, yeah. man. Yeah, they really remember you if you land good. Right, right. If you land bad, oh, they remember that too yeah, for yeah. a wrong reason. Yeah. <laughs> man, I gotta say, you know. Once again, it's an honor. It is an honor to be amongst someone who just elevated success. Not even just as a person, but a black man. That's what matters most, you know, and I just want to give you your flowers, you know. Thank you so much. Hey, Ma, you see this? Ma, you right. see this? Hey, Bunny, uh-huh. B. Jeff, look who we with. Look who we with. Yeah. Thank you. Up, man. 